Well, good morning and welcome to Christ UMC. Whether this is your first time joining us online or you've been here for a while, we are so grateful that you're spending a morning with us. This morning, our senior pastor, Jerry House, is gonna be concluding a little two-week series called Lessons from a Boat. I know you're gonna be blessed and encouraged by his message. As we begin worship this morning, let's pray together. God, we thank you for another morning, another day to experience your mercy anew and to sing of your praises. God, over these next moments, as we pause in our homes to worship you, open our hearts, open our ears, and open our minds to what you have to speak to us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Love Lifted Me. Let's stand and sing. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, singing to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now save am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. worship today. Our next hymn is America the Beautiful. I invite you to sing this hymn with us, especially on this most important weekend. This is the weekend where we celebrate Memorial Day. In America, we cherish so many things about our country. We celebrate the freedom that we have, especially the freedom to gather and to worship. And those freedoms did not come without a price. Almost every family is touched in some way through the armed forces. You may have a, a loved one that serves, has served, or is currently serving. We've all known folks that have served in the, in the service, and especially we remember on this weekend those that paid the ultimate price and gave everything, their life, in service for the country that we love. And so I invite you to keep those thoughts in mind as we share together this most beautiful song, America the Beautiful. Let's sing.
worship. Shout to the Lord. thousands of years, the Church of God and the Church of Christ has affirmed the common faith that we all share. Today, our affirmation of faith will be the Apostles' Creed. And so, as you're standing or sitting, whatever posture you're in, I invite you to together to say what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, good morning. So we come this morning to celebrate Memorial Day. I want to uh, remind you before we uh, go into our prayer time that there's a link at the bottom of your screen that if you'd like a copy of the prayer list uh, for this week, uh, go ahead and, and, touch, and get mess that, and it will uh, bring it to you. If uh, you have a prayer request you'd like to make, go ahead and put that in the comments, and we'll get that to the prayer team. And today... Uh, Pastor Jerry's got a, a very special message uh, that he's going to be speaking to us. And if, if, some, if he speaks to you today and you'd like a follow-up, maybe, uh, one of the pastors to, to come and uh, to follow up with you and speak to you, uh, note that in the comments and, and, or just call us or email us and, and let us know uh, because we'd like to get in, get in touch with you and, and just uh, sit down and talk. If, uh, if Jesus really touches your heart today and you want to get in contact, do that. What we're going to do as we begin our time of prayer is we're going to have a time of silence. And during that time of silence, remember those in your uh, life uh, who have served in the military or, or uh, gave their life uh, during wartime uh, for our country. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to come together, to worship together uh, through this, uh, through the internet. God, uh, you have blessed this church in so many ways. You've blessed us with the, the ability to make this happen. You've given, given us people with the skills and the, the, to, to put this thing together so that we can stay together as a church family and, and worship you. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for that. We thank you for loving on us. Uh, even though we're apart. Lord, uh, today we want to lift up all those in the military, the ones who are serving now, but especially those who gave their life uh, for our country. God, we just pray and ask that you will uh, 
bless their families and, and, and just let everyone know that we're not going to forget them, that we remember each and every one. Lord, uh, this is a, uh, a day that we want to remember uh, all of our people uh, as they travel, as we begin to coming back together. And God, we just thank you uh, that you've given us this place to, to come and to worship you. Lord, we want to pray for all the people on our prayer list for whatever reason they're there. Just ask that you bless them and bring healing to them or bring comfort and peace. We pray for Pastor Jerry today as he brings the message to us. And we just pray that it's a very powerful word that will touch the hearts of the people who listen to it. And God, we just thank you and praise you. We love you. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Shout to the Lord of the earth, let us see. Heather Norman, and I'm the Children's Ministry Director. We sure do miss the sound of your kids' laughter in the halls up here at church, and we cannot wait to be with them again. But in the meantime, it has been such a blessing to interact with your kids and your families in whatever way we can right now. I wanted to tell you about two amazing nights we have planned, tonight and tomorrow night. Tonight, we are having a Zoom game night for all kids pre-K all the way through second grade. And then tomorrow night, we're going to have another Zoom game night for third through sixth grade. The email have been, or an email has been sent out with the link to our Zoom meetings. If you haven't gotten that, then that means you're not on our Dig Kids email list. So email us and let us know so we can make sure you're added and get you that information. You can email us at digkids at christ-umc.org. We have so many amazing things being planned right now for the time when we can be together again. And we can't wait to share that information with you as soon as it's ready. So make sure that you join our Dig Kids Facebook page, check out our children's ministry website on the church webpage and join or and make sure you're getting our dig kids emails those are the best ways for us to communicate with you and I want to take a moment to thank you so much for faithfully giving your tithes and offerings every week you are such a blessing to this church family and to the community and God is using those offerings to bless so many people so now is the right time to click on the online giving link if that's the way you want to give. The link is down in our video description below. So join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to stay focused on your will and your guidance for our lives. Take the offerings that are given today and throughout the week and use it to bless your people. God, help us to truly be your hands and feet in this community and in the greater world. It's all these things that we pray in your son's name. Amen. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the follies of sin. Jesus, tis now.
Good to be with you again. Today we're back out on the water at Carter Lake, uh, just off the shore um, from my house. And uh, it's a peaceful morning, and I'm glad to be able to spend this time with you from the water. So the scripture passage this morning that I'm gonna share with you comes from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. And uh, it's a familiar story, but I encourage you to listen to it with, with new ears. Hear what Matthew says. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go out ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, Jesus was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from the land. It was buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter said, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. And then Peter got down out of the boat. He walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me, he said. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and he caught Peter. You have little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for giving us the opportunity to be together um, today from this place. And I ask your blessing over this message. Lord, I pray that, um, that each person who hears this would be touched by your word today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're going to talk about Peter. And I got to tell you, I like Peter. But uh but I must admit, if I were to have spent much time with him, I think I would have just gotten a little tired of him. I mean, you know, Peter was the kind of guy that, that always said what was on his mind. Um, if he thought it, he said it. Um, he, he didn't have much of a filter. Uh, he, he was just sort of a, a bold, out there kind of guy. I mean, what you see is what you get with Peter. And, and I, I, I probably would have gotten a little weary of him. Um, but I mean, that's just who he was. That's how he was. And it's, it's no surprise to me if you look at the story of his life, especially his walk with Jesus, he was the first disciple that Jesus called to follow him. And uh, the truth of the matter is, knowing Peter, uh, if he was the fifth disciple that Jesus would have, would have called, Peter would have put himself out in the front first leading the way, because that's just how he was. I mean, there was a time when, when Jesus asked all of the disciples, who, who do you say that I am? And guess who spoke? It was Peter. Peter said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And that caused Jesus to speak a blessing over Peter. And, and actually in that moment, because of what Peter said that day about Jesus, Jesus gave Peter a new name, a name that we refer to him 
today as. Uh, prior to this moment, everybody called him Simon. That's how they knew him. But on that day, after Peter declared that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus gave him a new name, a name Peter, a name that meant rock. That's a pretty strong nickname, don't you think? And, and, and I'll tell you, it's amazing if you look at, at how Peter just sort of carried himself. Uh, he, he wasn't always, when he was out front, he wasn't always doing some of the, the most laudable kinds of things or saying the most appropriate kind of things. In fact, just a, just a matter of minutes after he, he declared that Jesus was the Christ, just minutes later, um, Jesus told the disciples that he was going to have to go to Jerusalem where he would be arrested and killed. And Peter said, no, Jesus, that'll never happen to you. That'll never happen to you. And do you know what Jesus said in response? You remember, right? Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, for you're a stumbling block to me. You know, I think it's, it's that back and forth relationship that Peter had with Jesus that sort of characterized their, their walk together. I, I mean, you might even say that, that Peter was a walking contradiction. He, one day he was on top of the world. The next day he, because of something he said or something he did, he, he was in the doldrums. I mean, that was just kind of how Peter lived his life. Uh, in fact, you look at the last days of Jesus' life the, when he and his disciples were celebrating the Lord's Supper. Um, Peter said, Jesus, I'll never deny you. I'll never leave your side. I'll always be there with you. And then hours later, hours later, Peter denied Jesus, not once, not twice, but three times. Can you relate to Peter? <laughs> I know I can. I mean, uh, I, I don't know of anybody in the Bible that is more real, more human than Peter. I mean, one day Peter is the kind of Jesus follower that everybody would want to imitate. Then the next day, he's the kind of person that nobody would ever want to model their lives after. And I guess if the truth were known, I think all of us would have to admit that about ourselves. We don't like to admit that though. It was 32 years ago. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, I, I was uh, sitting before the District Committee on Ordained Ministry in, in Katy, Texas, and, and the, the head of the committee was a, was a minister named Jack Shelton. And, uh, and he was asking me questions. I had just finished one of the, the last segments of my candidacy studies. I was uh, about to enter my senior year in college. And, and so I was answering questions about ministry. And, and uh, Jack asked me a question. He said, little Jerry, <laughs> That's what my dad's friends and my grandfather's friends always call me. He said, little Jerry, he said, you know, you, you've, uh, I've watched you since you were a little boy and, and I, I've seen some of the things you've done and, and, uh, and, and you've, you've done a pretty good job. But I want to ask you a question, he said. He said, how are you going to respond when you fail? I got to tell you, nobody ever asked me that question before. And, and I, in my young, indestructible self, I responded by, by saying, uh, well, um, you know, I, I guess if I fail, I'll just deal with that when it comes, knowing in my young mind that uh, thinking I, I would never fail. I, I got to thinking, I wonder what would happen if Peter had been sitting in the seat I was sitting in. And Jack asked him a question, a little Petey? So, uh, I've seen how you've lived your life. You've done some pretty good things. But what are you going to do if you fail? I think Peter would have answered the same way I would have answered. I think Peter would have said, you know, uh, I, I'll, I guess I'll deal with it when it comes. Thinking in his mind, I'll never fail. But then you look at the course of Peter's life and you'll see very quickly that he did fail several times. Oh, yeah, he succeeded. He did some incredible things. But he also failed. And... Uh, and maybe that's why he had two names, <laughs> uh, you know, one, one for Simon and one for Peter. And, you know, maybe a lot of us should have two names for that matter. And then you got to look at what, what happened in the scripture that, that I just read from Matthew 14. Um, th that scene on the, on the lake followed an amazing moment in Matthew's gospel where Jesus fed 5,000 people um, using five loaves of bread and two fish. I mean, the morale couldn't have been higher. And then look what Jesus did. In Matthew 14, 22, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. 
And after he dismissed the crowd, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land. It was buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. So here he goes again. Jesus sends his disciples out on a boat into a storm. Now, I said this last week, and, and, and I'll say it again, because I believe it with all my heart, that Jesus knows the weather forecast. I mean, he knew what they were going to go into in that boat that day. He knew that he was sending them out into a storm. But haven't you ever heard the, the phrase, um, the safest place to be is in the will of God? Have you ever heard that? The safest place to be is in the will of God? Um, I, I've heard that a lot, and 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 that... That statement is true to a point. I mean, it's true that the safest place for you to be during the course of your life is to be right in the middle of the will of God. But I got to tell you, sometimes it doesn't feel that way. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it's the safest place to be because sometimes you can be walking in the middle of God's will for your life and you'll be walking right into a storm. And sometimes that storm that you face will be the most ferocious, the most potentially devastating storm that you have ever seen or ever experienced in your life. I mean, look at what happened with these disciples. They were doing exactly what Jesus told them to do. They got into the boat and they started off to go to the other side. They didn't veer to the right. They didn't veer to the left. They did exactly what Jesus told them to do. And they went right into a storm. I want to tell you, sometimes, sometimes faith will lead you through difficulty, not around it. I know I've seen that in my life, and, and maybe you've seen that in yours. Sometimes faith is going to lead you through difficulty, not around it. I mean, that's what happened with the disciples. He sent them away, knowing that he was sending them right through a storm. And while they were headed into that storm, Jesus was on the mountainside by himself praying. The storm is raging and Jesus is praying. Now I got to thinking, I wonder what he was praying for while he was praying that, that evening. I have a hunch. I have a hunch that Jesus was praying for their faith to be strengthened. I, I, I have a hunch that Jesus was saying, God, Father, please, please strengthen their faith while they're out in that storm. Listen, there is never a second in your life where Jesus doesn't know exactly what's going on with you. There is never a second in your life when Jesus doesn't know exactly what's going on with you. There is never a moment when you are outside of his watchful eye. When he was on the mountain praying by himself that night, he was still watching over his disciples. When he is seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven, right this very moment, he is still watching over you and he's watching over me. And he will always help us. Always. It's a promise. In the 11th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, uh, Gospel of Matthew Jesus said this. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and, and burdened, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And then Peter. Peter would later write in his first letter, he, he, he said, cast all your anxiety on him, for he cares for you. He cares for you. And that is so true. He cares for you and he will always, he will always come to our aid. But I got to tell you, I look at the scripture and the scripture is pretty clear to me. He will not always come immediately. <laughs> I mean, he, he will not always come right when the storm starts to blow. I mean, sometimes those storms rage before Jesus shows up. Notice in, in, in Matthew's gospel that it was the fourth watch of the night before Jesus came. So that means it was around 4 a.m. before he came. They had been fighting for six hours, most likely, against this storm. That's almost an all-night battle that the disciples were facing in that boat. And then Jesus comes to them in the middle of that storm, walking on water. And when they, when they see him walk, walking out to him, they think he's a ghost and they're, they're terrified. And, and quite frankly, I don't know if they were more scared of the storm or if they were more scared of, the, of what they perceived to be a ghost that was walking toward them on the water. Matthew says they cried out in fear. 
But then he says, Jesus spoke. He spoke into their fear. And I hope you hear me right now when I say that that I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus wants to speak into your fear and my fear right now. Whatever it is you're afraid of, he wants to speak into it. What might that be for you? Maybe, uh, Maybe you're afraid of being around other people right now during this season, this pandemic season. Maybe you're afraid of going to the store. Maybe, maybe you're afraid of going out. Jesus wants to speak into that fear. Maybe you're afraid of your health. Maybe you're afraid of something that, that, that's, that's possibly gonna happen at work. Maybe you're afraid that your job won't, won't be there next week. Maybe, maybe you're afraid of a conversation that, you're, that you gotta have with your spouse a little bit later and, and you don't know how that's gonna go. Maybe you're afraid of, of, of what might be happening with one of your children who, who's walking a wayward path right now. I don't know what it, exactly it might be for you, but I suspect that all of us have a certain level of fear that's brewing within us. And I wanna tell you right now, Jesus wants to speak into that fear. He wants to speak into that fear just like he spoke into theirs that day. Jesus walked to them on the water and they were terrified. And Jesus said, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. So then, then of course, it was Peter who spoke. Peter said, Lord, Lord, if that is you, then command me to come to you on the water. Now, I want to freeze the frame right here. I want to just stop this, this, this story right here. And, and I mean, you know what's going to come next. You've, you've heard this story before. You know what's about to happen. But, but I got a question. You know, we talk a lot about saying yes to Jesus. You know, Jesus in, in invites you to, to follow him. Are you going to say yes to him? Jesus invites you to, to serve him with the gifts that he's given you. Are you going to say yes to him? I mean, we talk a lot about saying yes to Jesus, but, but here's my question. What about when Jesus says yes to you? What about when he says yes to you? You offer up a prayer to him. You, you offer a request to him. You say, Lord, Lord, lead me into this situation. Lord, tell me what it is I need to know so I can say what I need to say. Lord, help me make it through this next thing in my life. Lord, I, I don't know whether I should go this way or that way. Lord, will you tell me which way I should go? And you offer up those prayers. And, and I, I, I got to tell you, I think a lot of times when we offer prayers to Jesus, we don't necessarily believe with all our hearts that he's going to answer them. But what about when he does? What about when Jesus says yes to your request? Are you willing to respond to his yes with an okay? I don't know if we're always ready to do that. I mean, suppose, suppose this thing had worked out this way. Suppose Peter said to Jesus, uh, Lord, command me to come out to you on the water. And, and Jesus said, okay, come. And suppose Peter said, ah, no, I, uh, I don't really want to do that. I, I, I never really wanted to do it anyway. I just was kind of wanting to see what you'd say if I asked you. But that's not what happened. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And, and Peter, Peter walked out of the boat and he started walking toward Jesus. That's what the scripture says. He started walking on the water, one step, then another, then another. But then Matthew says, he saw the wind. He saw the wind. He saw the wind. I, I, I want you to notice that Peter started to walk and then he saw the wind and he started to sink. Notice the progression. He started to walk on water. He saw the wind and he started to sink. And as he's sinking, he cries out to Jesus, Lord, help me. And Jesus walks over, he reaches out, he takes Peter's hand and he lifts him up out of the water. And he says, oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? 
And I look at that, that, that moment where Jesus asks Peter, why did you doubt? And I want to say, now, wait a minute, Jesus, didn't you notice? He was walking. He was stepping on the water. But that's not the point of the story. The point is not how many steps did Peter take on the water? No, the point of the story is that Peter's faith falters and then he started to sink. That's the point of this story. But he started with faith. He started, and it took a certain amount of faith for Peter to step out of that boat and to walk on the water. And, and, and it took more than just a little faith to do that. John Ortberg wrote a book several years ago, and the book was entitled, If You Want to Walk on Water, You Got to Get Out of the Boat. I love that title. And then he said this in his book. He said, you get out of the boat and you might stumble. You might struggle. You might even sink a little bit. But one thing is sure, you'll never walk on water if you don't get out of the boat. <laughs> you'll never walk on water if you don't get out of the boat. I wanna ask you a question right now. What does getting out of the boat look like for you? I want you to think long and hard on that right now. What does getting out of the boat look like for you? Maybe getting out of the boat for you is, is, uh, is a matter of forgiving somebody that, that's, that you've been upset with for a long time. You've been harboring that anger toward that person. Maybe, maybe you need to get out of the boat today and forgive that person. Maybe getting out of the boat for you right now is, is, is serving. Is, uh, is taking those gifts that, that God has given you and putting them into practice and serving your Lord. Um, and, and maybe that's what getting out of the boat looks like for you. Maybe getting out of the boat for you looks like um, loving the least or the lost. Maybe, maybe it looks like for you loving someone who's really hard to love. Or maybe, maybe getting out of the boat for you looks like loving yourself. I know a lot of us could stand it to love ourselves a little bit more. Or maybe for you, getting out of the boat has to do with your relationship with Jesus. Um, you know, you said for a long time that, that you're a Christian, but for you, that's just really been a, a label. Um, it, it's never really gone soul deep for you. So maybe, maybe today getting out of the boat for you involves surrendering your will to His. Maybe it involves making a deeper level of commitment to Jesus. Maybe it involves making a profession of faith in Him. Maybe, maybe you've been going to church all your life, but you've never given your life to Jesus. Maybe, maybe getting out of the boat for you today means finally doing that. Or maybe it involves being baptized. Maybe you've not been baptized and, you, and, and you've put it off. You've been embarrassed by the fact that you've not been baptized. Maybe getting out of the boat for you means, means getting under the water and being baptized. Or, or maybe getting out of the boat for you today just means making a decision to stop playing with Christianity and start really living it out in your life. I don't know what that look, might look like for you. Maybe getting out of the boat for you today is to stop the addictive behavior you've been engaged in. Maybe it means stopping drinking. Maybe that's been, a, maybe that's been an addiction for you. Maybe there are pills that you've been taking to just numb your, your, your mind. Maybe getting out of the boat for you means changing your language. Stop saying the kinds of things that you say that, are, that, that betray God's will for your life in the way that, that you should speak to others. Maybe, maybe getting out of the boat for you right now means just changing your attitude. Maybe it means stop questioning all the time. Maybe, maybe getting out of the boat for you means you becoming more of a yes person than a no person. I don't know what it might look like for you, but I think all of us at some level of our lives need to get out of the boat today. And, and I think that's the case for me. There's no question in my mind. So I, I really do want to have the faith of Peter. I mean, it took a certain measure of faith for him to get out of the boat and try to walk on water. And I want that same kind of faith in my life. Don't you? Maybe today's the day. Maybe today's the day that you and I get out of the boat. What do you think?
Now here's the thing. You might try to get out of the boat and it might not immediately work like you hoped it would work. You might step out of the boat and sink. Peter sank. Even rocks sink. But if you do sink, Jesus will be there. You might, right this very minute, be sinking in the waves of your life. Well, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus wants to take your hand and bring you up out of the waves and bring you into his presence so that you can worship him. But I gotta tell you, you don't have to be all dried up and cleaned up before you're able to worship him. You don't. I mean, you might be like I am right now, dripping. And that's okay. I mean, look at what happened with Peter. He, he, he stepped out of the boat. He started walking on the water, but then he sank. It, it's not that he didn't have enough faith to step out of the boat. It's just that, it's just that he took his focus off of Jesus and then he started sinking. And that's the th same thing that happens to you and to me all the time. The moment we take our focus off of Jesus, we start to sink. But does the fact that, that you have been sinking disqualify you from His love? Does the fact that you might be standing like I am right now, dripping from your sinking, does that disqualify you from, from being able to be in His presence and worship Him? No. I mean, if you, if you are right now, sinking in the waves or if you're dripping wet because you've been in the water he wants to he wants to take your hand and bring you into his presence so that you can worship him i'll tell you what he'll do this is how he'll do it he'll still the storms that are around you but i gotta tell you this when the wind stops blowing you might still be dripping just like me just like Peter was in the boat when they got back in the boat. But just because you're dripping, just because you're a little wet because of your, your failure, does that mean that you can't be in the presence of Jesus and worship Him? Absolutely not. All the drippers in this world, all the people who have little faith, all the people who get distracted are welcome in His presence. And he wants to shower his love and his grace over all of us who have little faith, over all of us who sink in the waves. He wants to come into our lives and bring love and grace and mercy, even if we're dripping wet. There was another scene in Peter's life where he was dripping again. You may remember it's at the end of John's gospel. Jesus had been raised from the dead. Peter and the disciples were out fishing and they hadn't caught anything all night long. And, and so, so they're, they're ready to, to come back in and they see somebody on the shore and, and the person on the shore says, hey, cast your nets on the other side of the boat. John recognized that voice. He said to Peter, hey, that's Jesus. And this time, this time, Peter got out of the boat, but he didn't try to walk on water. This time he swam and he swam to shore and he walked out of the, out of the, out of the, the lake and, and he spent some time with Jesus and, and they had breakfast together. And then Jesus pulled Peter aside. I have a hunch he was still dripping. And Jesus talked to Peter. He said, Simon, do you love me? Do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you feed my sheep. You know what that says to me? That says to me that even if I'm dripping wet, even if I have, have failed in my effort to, to walk out in faith, He's going to receive me. And He wants to use me to spread His love and His grace and His mercy to other people. He's going to invite me, even if I'm dripping. But here's the thing. He's not going to leave me that way. And the same is true for you. You may right now, as you're looking at this, this the screen, watching this, this message, you may be dripping yourself. You may have said something to her that you shouldn't have said the other day. You may have said something to God that you wish you hadn't said. 
In fact, you may be dripping right now. But I want to tell you, and I hope you hear me when I say this, He's ready to receive you. He's ready to receive you. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter how badly you may have failed Him during the course of your life, He's ready to receive you. My question for you is this. Will you take His hand? Will you take His hand and let Him lead you into His presence where you can worship Him and receive His love? He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. And He's ready. Let's pray. God, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for taking me and for all of us who are dripping right now into your presence. And I thank you, Lord, that we can worship you. I thank you that we can be loved by you. No matter how many mistakes we might have made in the course of our lives, no matter how, how messed up we might be right now, Lord, you are wanting to receive us to yourself. And so I thank you for taking us just as we are. But God, I thank you even more that you're not content to leave us that way. And so we hear the call of your son to come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and I'll give you peace. Lord, we receive that invitation today. Thank you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for being with us today. I hope that you've heard something and experienced something during this time of worship that has stirred your heart. And if by chance you have been listening to this message today and feel compelled to, to give your life to Jesus, then I, I want to just invite you to, to, uh, to reach out to me. I want to walk with you through this journey. Um, I, I know that there are some of you who are dripping wet right now and you are feeling a, a lot of gratitude that you can come to him just as you are. And so I join you in just thanking God for his grace and his mercy and his love. If you've not let us know that you're worshiping with us today, I hope you'll register your attendance. There's a link below in the, in the description area. Um, let us know that you're with us. If you have not taken the opportunity to, to, uh, to share with God your tithes and offerings, there's a place where you can, can give your offering as well in the description area below this viewing window. Again, it has been a blessing to be with you today. I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. I pray that the Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. I pray that the Lord will lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So go in that peace and may God's blessings go with you. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, his mercy reigns unending love. Me. Oh.